All right, today's lesson is going to cover triangles, and our learning targets are that you, the learner, will make distinctions among triangles by classifying them by their angles or sides, and the other learning target is that you, the learner, will use the triangle sum theorem to find missing angles in triangles. For starters, triangles are just a type of polygon. Polygons are shapes where the sides are segments, and they meet at a vertex, so that would be a polygon right there. Uh, hexagon is a polygon. Uh, trapezoid is a type of polygon. A uh, circle, not a polygon because it's not made up of line segments. So you can't say that that's a polygon. But triangles are the first type of polygon that we're really going to focus on here today. And um, what we can basically do with triangles is that we can classify them into two groups. Now one way you can classify triangles is by their angles. So sometimes triangles are going to have acute angles, sometimes they're going to have an obtuse angle, and sometimes they'll have a right angle, like on this one on the far right. So that's one way we can classify triangles, by their angles. The other way we can classify triangles is by just looking at their the sides and how long each side is, by their side lengths. So some triangles have all sides the same, some triangles only have a couple that are the same same exact length, and some triangles, a lot of them, have all three that are different lengths. Now, classifying triangles by their angles is one of our first things that we're going to look at here. Acute triangles, a really simple type of triangle to identify, and acute triangles have all three angles that are acute. If you look at this triangle right here, every single angle is acute. 54 degrees, 65 degrees, and 61 degrees. All three of those are different measurements, and they're all less than 90. 54, 65, and 61. Those are all acute measures. So you can call that an acute triangle. Acute triangles must have all three. Not just one, not just two acute angles, but every one of those angles, all three, must be acute. In the middle, we have a right triangle. Now, a right triangle has just one right angle. It wouldn't be impossible to have a triangle with two right angles because it would never close. A right triangle look for the little square or look for 90 degrees, but a right triangle has just one right angle. An obtuse triangle has, just like a right triangle, just one obtuse angle. In this triangle, 121 is an obtuse measurement. The other two are, of course, acute. So that's how you guys classify triangles by their angles. If all three are acute, then it's an acute triangle. If one is right, then you call it a right triangle. And if just one angle is obtuse, you call it an obtuse triangle. You might look at this triangle, for instance, this one on the far right. You might look at that and go, well, you know what? There's only... I, I see two acute angles, so therefore it might be acute. Well, don't count out that the third angle, even if it's not given, is not obtuse. Sometimes it will be. Okay, the other way you guys can classify triangles is by their sides. Okay, so what we have are um, scaling triangles. Scaling triangles have no sides that are the same. Every single side is a different length. So 14, 13, and 12. One important thing that you might want to note is that if all three sides are different, then you can assume that all three angles are different, okay? And that will be true for pretty much for all the other kind of triangles as well. In the middle, we have an isosceles triangle. And an isosceles triangle, if you read the definition really carefully, you'll see that it says at least two equal sides, at least two equal sides. And I'm going to revisit that kind of definition just a little bit. But two sides at least are equal, okay? So this is a classic right here. This picture right here is a classic isosceles triangle where the two sides here are both, those are both 54 feet, and the base side is 45 feet. One thing that's also safe to assume about an isosceles triangle is that if two sides are equal, then you can count on two angles being equal. The two angles that are equal will be, will be adjacent to the equal sides. So here's 54. So this angle right here is equal to this angle right there. So the base angles on the bottom right and left are going to be equal measures as well. They're not going to be 54 degrees or 45 degrees. I'm just saying that their measurement, the number of degrees they are, will be equal. On the third one, we have an equilateral triangle. And of course, you probably all know that equilateral has exactly three equal sides. Okay, and one thing that you can also say is that all three angles are equal. And it just happens that on an equilateral triangle that all three angles are equal to 60 degrees. 60, 60, 60, making it an acute triangle. So all equilateral triangles will always be acute. Always. Now one thing that we can also 
make a note of? An equilateral triangle will also be isosceles. Because if you look at the definition of an isosceles, it says at least two equal sides. So does an equilateral triangle have at least two equal sides? And that would be true. Yes, an isosceles triangle has two equal sides. Well, it has three. An, an equilateral triangle has three. Um, but we can also call that isosceles. Okay, let's go through some examples here pretty quickly and classify the triangles that I have drawn up by their angles and by their sides. So let's first look at this triangle by its angles and look at what we have. We have a 65 degree angle, we have a 72 degree angle, and a 43 degree angle. All three of those angles are acute, therefore we're dealing with an acute triangle. Okay, now let's look at the side lengths. So this side is 74, this side is 72, and this side is 81. Therefore, you can say that this triangle is scalene. All three sides are different lengths. So when we classify this triangle, we can call it an acute scalene triangle or scalene acute. It doesn't matter how you state it. But it's acute and it's scalene. Okay, so there's two ways we can we can uh, label that triangle. Oh, gosh, I hate this program. Now, on this triangle right here, let's classify this one by its angles. And if you look at the angles, we have a 33 degree angle, we have 118, and we have 29. Now, you might think that this is acute because we have a couple acute angles, but this one right here, well, 118 is just sticking out like a sore thumb, and that tells me that this is an obtuse triangle. If we look at its side lengths, we have all different sides. I don't see a single side that's 18, I don't see another side that's 27, and I don't see another side that's 20. All of them are unique sides, therefore that can be called a scalene triangle. So this triangle right here is an obtuse scalene triangle. Next up, we have a triangle that's oriented a little bit differently, but let's look at its angles. In this triangle, we have 52 degrees, we have 52, and we have 76, all of which are acute angles. Every one of those is less than 90. So this is easy, it's acute. Now let's look at its side lengths. Here's 17, and then two of them are 25. So two sides are 25, that makes it automatically isosceles. So this is an example of an acute isosceles triangle. Okay, now let's classify this one by its angles. Now you'll notice here that the, all the angles are 60, 60, 60. Therefore, it's got to be acute. Okay, now look at the side lengths. All the sides are 25 feet. 25 feet, 25 feet, 25 feet. Therefore, it's an equilateral triangle. So this is an equilateral acute. But what else could we call this triangle? Also, isosceles. Okay, it's isosceles because it has at least two equal sides. It's most specifically, though, an equilateral. Okay, so that's what we're really looking for. But it's also isosceles if you want to be really picky about it. Okay, next up, I want to talk about the angles that are inside of a triangle. I'm going to look at the angles inside of a triangle. One thing that you may or may not know already is that all three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Always. No matter what kind of triangle it is, whether it's obtuse, whether the triangle is acute, if it's right, it doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is, all three angles, no matter what, will make a sum of 180 degrees. Now in this example right here, I kind of put together a little bit of an animation that kind of shows you why a triangle equals 180 degrees. And what you have to do is basically kind of just imagine that I'm tearing the corners of each angle off and I'm going to line them up by their vertices. Okay, so here's A. So I rip that off and I'm going to point it that direction. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing with B. Rotate it. Okay, and do the same thing with C. A little bit of a hack job of animation here, but should tell you a good story about what's going on here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that all three angles together make a straight line. Now, that's linear. We can't call this a linear pair because it's three of them, but all three angles are definitely supplementary. All of them form a line. So that means A, B, and C are all equal to 180 degrees when you put them together. So it's a little bit of a, of a proof there that shows you why that three angles of a triangle equal 180. And you could do this on your own. You could take any triangle, any shape you want. It's got to be triangular. could be acute, obtuse, equilateral. It doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is. If you take the corners, rip them out, put them point to point to point, you'll get 180 degrees. You'll get a straight angle for sure. Okay, now here's a, an example of one where we are missing an angle. We're going to call that D. Okay, so let's set up a simple equation here to help us figure out what D is. Okay, so my equation is going to be based on what the angles of a triangle add up to. So I'm going to start out with D plus 35 plus 37 equals 180 degrees. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the constants because those are like terms. D plus and then 35 plus 37 is 72 degrees. That equals 180. And then how do I solve this? We're going to solve this by subtracting 72 from both sides of the equation. D is 
cancel out, you're left with D equals whatever 180 minus 72 is. And that's pretty simple arithmetic right there. 180 minus 72 is 108. So that's 108 degrees. Now one thing that we could do just to be extra careful here is we just add them all up. Now we're saying that angle D is 108 degrees. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line all these up, add them up and see what I get. Eight plus five plus seven, that's easy math. 13 plus 7 is 20. I'm going to carry the 2. 2 plus 3 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. Nothing carries over. And I get the 1 just drops down. And there you have it. 180 degrees. And now I know I'm correct. There's no way that 108 is wrong. Because all three angles, 35, 37, and angle D, which was 108, added up to 180 degrees. Okay, our next example, very similar to the one we just did. This time we're looking for angle A, and we're gonna set up a similar equation. A plus 112 degrees plus 29 degrees, all together should equal 180. All right, put together like terms, 112 plus 29 is what? So you get A plus 141 equals 180. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the inverse operation of plus 141 by subtracting 141 from both sides of the equation. These cancel each other out and 180 minus 41, see that very well, A equals 39 degrees. Okay, in this example right here, you'll notice that we have, instead of numbers, we have expressions here. In every corner we have two X and we have an X and an X here. So basically this is an isosceles triangle and I'm going to set up an equation. This time instead of using just straight up degrees and numbers we're going to put our terms in there. So we know that 2x plus x plus x equals 180. So all three angles, 2x and the x is right here, all together make 180. Now like terms, what we know about like terms tells us that 2x, x, and x all adds up to 4x. So 4x equals 180, and then we're gonna divide both sides by four, and then you get x equals 180 divided by four. 180 divided by four is 45 degrees. Okay, and that in turn will help us figure out what the angles are inside the triangle. So now that we know that x is 45, well these two angles right here are 45 degrees. So the angle in each corner is 45 degrees, and then the angle up here, where it's says 2x is going to be 2 times 45. 2 times 45 is 90. 90 degrees. I know that does not look like a right angle, but let's just kind of rely on our math here and trust that we got it right. So this is 45, this is 45, and that's 90. And that does add up to 180 if you add it all up on your own. Okay, in this next example, what we have are some exterior angles. Like right here we have 28 degrees, and right here we have 70 degrees. And we have a couple missing angles inside of the triangle. So what we're going to have to do is use a little bit of deductive reasoning to help us figure out what A and C are. So what we're going to do is let's start out with A, okay? And the reason we're going to start with start out with A is because all three of these angles all lie on a straight angle. 70, A, and 28 add up to 180 degrees because they're all part of a linear, I guess, trio we can call it. They're not a linear pair because there's not just two of them. So there's a linear triad, I guess we can call it. All right, so let's put together like terms, which we can, which means we can only add constants. So 70 plus 28 makes 98 degrees and equals 180 and then we're going to take away 98 degrees from both sides these cancel out a is then equal to 180 minus 98 so 180 minus 90 is 90 minus another 8 leaves us with 82 degrees okay so i'm going to write in here that angle a is 82 degrees now to find c over here to find c what we're going to do is just set up another equation. So our equation this time is going to be C plus the angle we just found, 82, plus 68, and we're going to make that all equal to 180 degrees. Putting like terms together, you get C plus 82 and 68. 82 and 68 is 150, and that equals 180. Now I'm running out of room there, so I'm going to take, I'm going to basically just do 180 minus 150, and that leaves us with 30. So there's the third angle. So C equals 30 degrees. Now, just to be careful, because we did a lot of work on this one, I'm going to go ahead and add all those angles of the triangle. 82, 68, and 30. And we know we'll be right if we get 180 degrees. 2 and 8 is 10. Carry the 1. 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. So 180 degrees. So this one has checked itself off. We know that all three angles are 180 degrees. Now, we covered a lot in this, this lesson. I know there's a lot to go through here, so make sure took good notes, you wrote down the examples, you know, you didn't just write down just a few examples, you wrote down every one of the examples I did. Everyone have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.